first question somebody who has been incarcerated in a way for almost four years now for also at least metaphorically uttering unlawful oaths on our behalf Julian Assange you've written almost optimistically in the past few days that this might be the end of the road the findings yeah. by the UN um, the, the special panel are you are you really confident that that could be the end of the road no not too confident Stuart uh, but I think it is the beginning of the beginning this judgment this decision by the United Nations working group on arbitrary detention is very very significant they've only made five decisions in the years they've been going they've been going almost 20 years and all of them have been highly significant the decision has been adhered to by most of the governments of the world they made Aung San Suu Kyi the celebrated dissident in many ways that she wasn't before their judgment, although they didn't change the mind of the dictatorship in Burma. They stood up for a Washington Post reporter in Iran who was detained. They, yes, they stood up for Ibrahim, the opposition leader of Malaysia, and so on. So it's very significant. And what was also significant was the reaction of particularly the British government. This thug, and I think thug is the proper word for the present foreign secretary, who came out and described the, the decision as ridiculous. Now this is someone who, whose government has supported every decision made by the working group, who contributed considerably to the, the evidence of the working group, who went along with it. Uh, Although they tried to pressure the decision uh, when they knew it was going to go against them, so it is. It, it, it no, they don't have the UN doesn't have the power to go and free Julian from the Ecuador embassy in uh, in London. But you know things move even at a glacial pace. The British government cannot ignore this, and I think it is the beginning of a deal being done. There's a vacuum. What, what great states, great imperial states hate is a vacuum. And a vacuum exists right in the heart of London, next to Harrods. They've got somebody there who has defied them, who is a fully credited dissident. He, he has the world virtually officially now on his side. They will have to resolve it. I think there will be a deal that uh, in the middle of the night, Maybe, this is a guess, in the middle of the night, Julian will be given free passage out of the UK to Ecuador. I hope that will happen. A lot of the correspondence, even in social media, seems to still want to imply that the issue is about uh, potential sexual assault charges, whereas you've actually written several times that the issue about Julian Assange concerns a... Pentagon dominated Washington. Well, there are no charges, Stuart. There have never been any charges. There have never been any specific allegations. The whole thing is a grotesque farce. Uh, one of the women involved has said that the police tried to railroad her. That's the word she used. That they fabricated the evidence. Neither of them said there was any rape. And the first prosecutor made it very clear, and I can't quote her exactly, but she said words to the effect, there is no evidence whatsoever of any rape. And she dismissed it. She was the chief prosecutor in, in Stockholm. In comes the second prosecutor, brought in by a politician, a very ambitious politician. This prosecutor has succeeded in stalling, installing this case and almost putting it in a freezer for the last five years, she's refused to interview Julian. She refused to interview him. He hung around in, in Sweden for five weeks. And she refused to interview him. Then he asked her permission. Please can I go to London because I have to release the Iraq war logs and the, and the Guardian. They gave him permission. The moment he arrived in London, they, there was an Interpol red alert for him. I mean, 
there is the dreadful expression, you couldn't make it up, but there is a lot about this that you couldn't make up. And then she's under, under Swedish regulations, she's, she's meant to interview this person, again who's been charged with nothing. Uh, there's every facility in London for her to interview Julian, and she's refused to. So the, the, what, what the, the sexual, so-called sexual misconduct side of this has been an absolute gift to the propagandists. The media has played the most pernicious role in smearing Julian Assange. Uh, even the paper that, uh, that printed quite uh, a lot of the WikiLeaks disclosures, the Guardian newspaper, has run virtually a vendetta over the years against Julian. Uh, what this is about is a whistleblower. The administration in the United States, the Obama administration, has conducted a war on whistleblowers. Unlike any other administration, George W. Bush didn't pursue a, a single significant whistleblower. He could have, but he didn't. Obama, right at the beginning, said, uh, as a professor of constitutional law, I stand by whistleblowers, and then proceeded to prosecute more whistleblowers than any president in the history of the United States. Julian and WikiLeaks, Edward Snowden and others are regarded as enemies in a Washington that is dominated, dominated by the Pentagon, by the military. That's what this is about. And an indictment has been brought down, a secret indictment has been brought down in Alexandra, Virginia, that is waiting for Julia. They've had to concoct a prosecution because, as Obama himself has pointed out, under the U.S. Constitution, whistleblowing is perfectly legal. In fact, it's protected. My name is Linda Pearson. Um, I just wanted to ask you something about WikiLeaks. So thanks for being such a strong supporter of both Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. Um, I think Julian particularly needs strong voices like yours in the public eye now. Um, but yeah, I also think that sometimes the Julian Assange story can, is in danger of eclipsing the actual material which WikiLeaks has, has released. So I just wondered, as an investigative journalist, how that material has helped you and maybe what you think are the most significant releases um, and maybe what you think is the significance of the organization in general. Right. I think, I think that the Julian Assange story is only in danger of eclipsing WikiLeaks and I don't think it is because of uh, that he has uh, been so attacked and he has been attacked because of WikiLeaks and that's uh, uh, I think I think WikiLeaks is probably the most significant. The arrival of WikiLeaks is probably the most significant develop, development in the dissemination of free information and of journalism that I can remember. Yeah. Uh, and that's why he got into trouble. That's why Julian Assange got into trouble. That's why he excited so much jealousy among those paid to set the record straight, i.e. journalists, uh, who haven't been doing that. WikiLeaks, to use the, uh, the language of journalism, produced more scoops in a few months than uh, all of them did in a lifetime. Uh, he told, WikiLeaks <coughs> told, told us, or began to tell us, how our government lies to us in private, how it takes us to wars based on lies, uh, and, much, and much more. I mean, I think what's interesting, if you look at the whole landscape of WikiLeaks as disclosures, it's, it's, and the genius of WikiLeaks is the way they've targeted each country. So, um, <coughs> um, in Northern Ireland, for example, there have been some extraordinary revelations of what has happened in recent years in that country. Over Iraq, um, WikiLeaks disclosed that, that uh, the, the US government, in fact the West, had begun 
to uh, its campaign to get rid of Assad well before the so-called <coughs> Arab Spring. Um, so I suppose I can't really uh, pay uh, greater tribute to an organization. Uh, I'd like to pay tribute at the same time to Chelsea Manning. Chelsea Manning is serving 35 years for being an incredibly courageous truth teller. And they tried, they tried their best to get Chelsea to implicate Julian Assange and actually failed. They said that at Chelsea's trial. We've tried and we failed because Chelsea wouldn't play their game. So, um, you know, there's some amazing, amazing human beings that have cropped up in our sights in recent years, haven't there? And those two are two of them.